Mmm, mysterious black zipper bag thingy. That's got to be pretty cool. Well, kind of. Depends. If you own an EV, yeah, this is actually pretty cool. If you don't own an EV, you probably won't care at all, and that's totally fair. But what's in this thing, that's upside down, whoops, is a 32 amp EVSE. So that's electric vehicle support or something or other, service. So anyway, it stands for something with EV charging. Uh, this is what's called a level two, which means it operates on 240 volts instead of 120. Generally, when you buy an EV, you've got an emergency charger with it, which is a standard in the US anyway, and Canada, uh, 110 volt, 15 amp outlet. Something like you would find back here. One of those guys. Now, if you charge your basic low range EV on one of those, it's probably gonna take a full day. If you charge something like a Tesla Model S, it might take you three or four days. Yeah, that's right, days to charge your car. <laughs> it's about four miles per hour of charging. So a lot of people when they buy a low range EV or a high range EV, uh, we'll go ahead and buy a level two charger and then of course install an outlet. Now what that typically looks like is, yeah, cool, uh, it looks like a dryer outlet. And honestly, that's exactly what it is. It really kind of depends on how old your home is, but if you've got something made, let's say 2003 or more recently, you're gonna have a plug that looks like that somewhere hopefully near your electrical panel. <clears throat> And that will provide plenty of power for, as far as I know, every level two charging vehicle on the market today. That is able to handle 50 amps of power. Um, and these typically top out around 40 amps. This one right here is 32. And as a comparison, you're looking at about seven and a half amps of 240 equivalent for the emergency charger that comes with your car. So this should, in theory, charge wow, eight times as fast or something like that. Uh, and it does. Um, a car that would normally take 20 hours to charge on your regular outlet like that will now take three or less. So it's a significant difference. And if you drive a lot, you can actually get a lot more effective daily range out of your car if you pick up something like this. So building on that, <laughs> this one was actually sent to me a company called Bouge RV. Um, Full disclosure, I didn't pay for this. Um, they asked me to review their 16 amp version and I actually used to have a 16 amp Duo Cita brand EVSC for my Fiat 500e, a great uh, level two charger. It now lives with my buddy Nick who bought a 500e and he uses it every day. Uh, the 16 amp will take about five hours to charge that same 24 kilowatt hour vehicle. A great example is a BMW i3, Fiat 500e, Nissan Leaf. Uh, first gen anyway. So I've since changed to a, a Tesla Model S. So something with a little more oomph is pretty much necessary. If I bring my car home at night at 20% and I want to leave in the morning <laughs> and have it done charging, I need something like this. So a 16 amp charger isn't going to cut it. Uh, and this one will do a full 32. At least it's supposed to. Uh, we're going to test that out against my other EVSE down here, which is actually programmable. So we'll test it against uh, the standard outlet charger to see what that says for miles per hour, charge time, things like that. And then I'll also program the other charger I have down here to 16 amps. We'll take a look at the rated speed on that. Then we'll check the 32 on this. And then I'll last show you the 40 amp charge that I can do with my charger down here, which was way more expensive. Uh, the retail on this charger is a pretty reasonable $349 um, for a level two, especially one that comes with a really, really solid, this is not flimsy, uh, bag is nice. Uh, if you've ever lived with an EV, especially if you have multiple chargers, <laughs> you will appreciate this because the the rat's nest, like, like that, that's what the back of your car looks like all the time. So I didn't know it was actually going to come with that. I'm most pleasantly surprised um, with the carrying case. Um, next up is the, the cord. Uh, it's Chinese made, but it's 105 C rated 600 volt. It's really, really good cable. Um, um, I believe it's 10, it's 10 gauge plus an 18 gauge ground, I believe is what that means, which is perfectly up to the spec for a uh, 32 amp. You do need 10 gauge power carrying conductors, um, and you can undersize the ground a little bit when you've got the three other carrying wires. So, uh, I'm going to unwrap this thing, take it out of the box. Uh, we'll look at the length 
I'll go get the uh, standard charger that came with the Tesla. I'll get my other EV and we'll lay this one out as well. And we'll look at them all together. All right, so a couple things here. I mentioned the dryer outlet, the uh, 1450. Now that is what this connector is. These are actually the same thing, believe it or not. They look a little bit different. Um, then you'll also notice the NEMA 1450R. Uh, I've made these adapters. This is a 550, which is a little less common. It's for welders. And then I've also got a 1030R, which is old style dryer, which is only rated for 30 amps. So this is the only one that you probably won't be able to buy a commercially available adapter for because that's a 30 amp plug and that's a 50 amp plug. So if you plug one of these things full chooch into that, you will blow the breaker. Um, there's still security involved. There's plenty of thick wire. Uh, this was a cheapo uh, dryer cord. I think it was like six bucks and then an $8, $14.50 thing from Home Depot. I'm actually going to take this apart and tighten it up a little bit because it feels a little wonky now, but it works really well in a pinch and you will find the 1030 everywhere. It's actually really, really common on the 24 amp versions and honestly, some of the older 16 amp versions of the Duo Cita as well. Uh, I'm really happy to see the 1450. That is industry standard now. Campgrounds, things like that will have those instead. Um, so yeah, the only other things I want to mention, I've got a Zen car charger. I bought that about a year and a half ago. It's a 40 amp. Paid $430 for it with my own money. <laughs> um, OLED uh, display, but it requires an RFID tag, which I hate. Always hated that. Uh, the main reason I bought that one was because of the 25 foot cord, which this Duo Cita from Bouge RV also has. It's a really great feature. Um, and then I've also got the factory Tesla charger, which I bought after the fact. My car didn't come with it. That's about $300. Uh, that actually works with level one and level two charging. And that actually is capable of at least 32, maybe 40 amps. Uh, you'll see that the cord is much thinner. It's a higher temperature rated cord. Not to say that these other two are bad, but honestly, the Duo Cita, this Bouge RV charger, actually has the highest temperature, or not temperature, highest voltage rating, 600. This one's rated to 105C, but it's 300 volts. And this one is not labeled, the Tesla uh, charger. But you'll see the Tesla charger is 20 feet, and the other two are 25, although the Bouge actually does win by about a foot. So that's maybe a 26 foot. You'll see the Zen car has got the same generic tip on it. It actually doesn't have a power rating on it anywhere, whereas this one does. And it actually worryingly says 30 amps. Whereas if you go back to the back box on the charger, it says 32. So they're actually stressing it out just a little bit beyond its rating. I don't think that's going to cause a problem, but it's definitely something to be aware of. Uh, again, the Tesla one's not labeled. It's just here for my own <laughs> curiosity, basically, since we will be testing that for the level one speed in just a bit here. Uh, yeah, next up, I'm going to jam that plug into the Tesla charger, plug it into my car. We'll go inside and we'll see what it's giving us for miles per hour and for kilowatts. I'm going to put it on a 20 amp, 110 volt circuit. Best possible chance of um, success. So when you're shopping for a level two, there's just a few things to look for. Obviously, you're going to be used to this plug right here, 110 volts, 1450 modern dryers. You might have a 1050, which is, or sorry, a 550. This is an old style welding plug. And then you have a 30 amp 1030R, which is an old style dryer. You can get adapters. These are homemade. You can get adapters for these to work with a 32 amp charger. However, this plug is only good for 30 amps. So be wary if you have one of these, probably step down to a 24 amp or a 16 amp. This charger, I'm gonna compare it to my year old $430 Zen car I bought. Same plug, the Duo Cita has a 600 volt uh, cord. The Zen car is a 300 volt cord. And a nice feature, something I paid extra for on the Zen car charger last year, 25 foot cord. Although you'll see that the uh, Bouge RV actually is about a foot longer. Really, really nice. Uh, however, you'll see that the head is rated to 30 amps, not 32. So not sure if that's a worry, but something to think about since this charger is rated up to 32 amps and it actually says so on the back. 
Next step, I'm going to plug in my standard level one. We'll look at the miles per hour and then we'll set this up to 32 amps and we'll see how much ridiculously faster it is. Okay, I've just plugged in and it looks like we are only gonna get 12 amps out of it, which is one kilowatt. I think <laughs> it's saying 24 plus hours remaining. Uh, the charge current is maxed, so that's all she will do. And I'm gonna see if I can switch this to miles per hour. Yeah, so we'll see what this ends up being. Okay, so keep in mind, this is as healthy as outlets get. We're getting three miles per hour. Um, now I'm gonna unplug this thing and I'm going to plug in my Zen car programmed to 16 amps at 240 volts, which is equivalent to any off the shelf 16 amp EVIC that you might buy. Okay, so with a 16 amp 240 volt, we are up to 11 miles per hour, which is actually pretty decent. So this is 24 amps. We are seeing 17 miles per hour. So I have our 1450 plugged in. We should see the amperage slowly climb up to about 30. That's cool that it tells you how many real time kilowatt hours it's putting in and voltage. So yeah, we are getting 31.47 at 245, which is about right. That would be 32 at 240. So that's good. Let's go check on the car. So in the car, we are now doing 23 miles per hour. So 20 miles per hour faster with the level two at 32 amps than we were with the 12 amp 110 volt outlet. That is a huge difference. So yeah, in real world terms, that means instead of being able to only drive 40 or 50 miles a day, you could potentially drive 200 miles a day or something like that with a low range EV if you had 240 volt charging outlets everywhere you went, which is getting more and more plausible. Keep in mind the average J1772 public charger is 24 amps. So this is significantly more powerful than any of those. And this is 40 amp, so 10 kilowatt. We're getting 30 miles per hour. So there you have it. This thing turns your 20 hour charge into a three hour charge with your 24 kilowatt hour car, or it lets you fully charge your long range EV overnight where you may have not been able to do it over the course of several days. So if you guys are sick of your dependence on public chargers or would like to do a few more trips, in your electric vehicle, I would highly recommend paying an electrician the six or $800 it typically costs to put one of these in if you don't have it near your car and enjoy the benefits. Thanks for watching.